You know, we use the term hell in a lot of different ways. We say things like, uh, when hell freezes over, or uh, it's hotter than hell. You hear that a lot in the Las Vegas Valley, or I'm mad as hell. Sometimes people personalize it. They say things like, my, uh, my life is hell, my job is hell, my marriage is hell. I even heard somebody once say that, that something smelled like hell. I'm not exactly sure what hell smells like, but uh, I've got to believe that it's not good. It may smell not unlike this landfill that I'm at. And I'm at a landfill because Jesus, when he spoke of hell, uh, used a term that would have caused a lot of people to think about the dump. Jesus used a couple words for hell. One was uh, Hades. Hades is the term he uses in Luke 16 in the story of uh, Lazarus there. Hades was a term that uh, referred to this intermediate place people would go to prior to the final judgment in hell. Another word he used for hell is the word Gehenna. Gehenna referred to this valley uh, just south of the city of Jerusalem that was like the city dump. And people took their trash and their waste there and, and the fires burned there 24 hours a day. The, the smell became so nauseous and so horrible that it became sort of a metaphor for uh, the Jewish people of hell. And so when Jesus spoke of hell, a lot of people may have thought of the city dump. Now this particular dump that I'm at, this is the largest landfill in the nation. It is, uh, I'm standing right now on 18 stories of trash, 18 stories. They work 24 hours a day here, just dumping our stuff. So there's a couple things that happen at the dump. One is you've got disintegration. I mean, you got all these things lying around, you know, like I got an old shoe here and, uh, you know, somebody actually wore that thing and, and uh, nice little credit card. Wonder if that's uh, expired and all this stuff and it's all just disintegrating. And then you've got isolation. The dump is always outside of town. Even in the ancient world, the dump was often outside of the city. And so when the Bible talks about hell, it uses a couple metaphors. One is fire, which, what does fire do? It disintegrates. And the other is uh, darkness, and darkness isolates. In fact, Jesus called hell the outer darkness. In fact, one definition of hell is that hell is simply a place of utter darkness away from the presence of God. It's this place of complete isolation from the love of God. You know, the Bible says that, that God didn't create uh, hell for people. It never says that. It says he created hell for Satan and for his demons. And yet as you read the text and as you listen to the words of Jesus, uh, hell is, a, is described as a real place where those who choose to not follow God will eventually go in their lives. So why would a loving God allow people to go to a place of disintegration and of isolation? Why, why would hell exist to begin with? Well, maybe we should just step back because as you look at the Bible, you get the sense that, that maybe it's not so much God sends people to hell, but people choose to be there. For instance, 2 Peter chapter 3 says that the Lord does not want any to perish, but all to come to repentance. So God's desire, his heart, is that people will come to know him and love him, that people will come to experience him and be in a relationship with him. Another passage that's quoted often is John chapter 3, verse 16. You've heard this passage that, uh, for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But I love verse 17, it says, for he did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So Jesus came into the world, not to bring condemnation, not so that people will go to hell, but to save the world through him. But you and I, we have a choice. Someone has said that, that hell is the greatest tribute to human freedom. We have a choice, and if we choose to not follow God, if we choose to reject him in our lives, or if we just stay so neutral on it that we never embrace him, God created a place where he was not there. Ultimately, that is what hell is. And so, it was C.S. Lewis who said that in the end, there are two kinds of people. There are those who say to God, thy will be done. And there are those to whom God says to them, thy will be done. In other words, there is no hell without that self-choice. He said, the doors of hell lock from the inside. And the good news is, God didn't create you to be at a trash heap. He didn't create you as trash. He doesn't make trash. 
God created you because He loves you and He cares about you and He wants to be in a relationship with you and He wants you to know Him and enjoy Him forever. And, um, you know, His desire is that we would follow Him. He sent Jesus into the world. Jesus died on a cross. Jesus gave His life so that we could be in a right relationship with God. So this God who is holy and pure could at the same time uh, uh, have justice for sin and forgive. And Jesus took the penalty that our sins deserve. And I think in many ways, what Jesus is saying on the cross is, is simply this. I went to hell and back for you so that you don't have to go to hell, so that you can experience heaven. And anybody who goes to hell goes over my dead body. So friends, I wanna challenge you to, to think about some of the realities and ramifications of that term Jesus uses, Gehenna and ultimately to commit yourself to God and follow Him, be in a relationship with Him. He went to hell and back for you so that you and I could experience heaven.